Do, 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 do. Alpha Dream Flight. All right. Wait, what? Oh, it, it's just, a, you know, a level that was submitted, like all the other ones. Requires you to go to Dinosaur Land. Yeah, I'm not going to keep up the facade for too long. This is uh, Nope Contest's judge level. Um, and I decided I'd just treat it as is. So we'll, uh, we'll just go for it. And treat it as a regular level, since I missed the other one. This is already pretty weird, actually. <laughs> Alright. Signs pointed don't do that. Yes, there were 125 levels. I'm just treating Nope Contest's judge level. Nope Contest is another one of the judges. Uh, as if it was a real level. Um, for the purposes of this contest. Though I will admit I am very confused right now. Dragon coin up there? Okay, so. That kills the shell. I want the P switch, I think. There's a moon up there, which is just kind of taunting me. Should have submitted a hack where the initial message box said the normal thing, but written backwards. There is, in fact, Backwards Mario World, as made by, um, Dots, I think? I've been tempted to play it a couple times, but I have not actually gotten around to it. No, it makes no difference where I throw that. Hmm. CLDC, uh, CLDC Confusing Level Design Contest. Definitely that. Yeah, dots are cool. Uh, they have a new name. I forget what it is, like Freeze or something, but it, it's a name that causes my eyes to kind of roll off of it, which is not ideal. Okay, let's try getting up here. Maybe that answers a question. No. This is wacky. Um... What do I want to do here? Like, there's two places I could possibly throw this shell. And none of them are helpful. I could do a mid-air, I could get the moon, but I don't need to do a moon- need to, uh, do a mid-air. Or more accurately, I don't want to do a mid-air. We'll leave the mid-airs up to the experts. So I can get up there, up there, without any other sort of assistance. Isn't backwards Mar- oh, so, okay. Um, so there's, like, backwards Mario World, which is a hack by West Slasher. But there also is, on Dots' site, a legitimately backwards version of Super Mario World where you just go backwards. So, now you know. Wait, there's an object that falls there. All right, so I think I see something about what's important. So if I hit the P switch, it makes it so that object there doesn't fall down immediately, whatever the hell it is. It's probably a chuck so that I can get into here, maybe? One of those things easier to see on stream. No, that's just like a, that's a Yoshi. Think of the wrong hack. I called Oziak. that was canceled. Hmm. Wait! Oh, I know what I'm doing wrong. Those are the uh, single tile lava, so I need to get into the single tile lava so I can swim upward because, oh, it's Yoshi time. All right, fair enough. Drop that. So I need... To do is not that. Yoshi! 
Um, like, I can get into that as long as I don't lose P-Speed. How am I going to get P-Speed and still be up there? Maybe careful jumping off of this platform is really the... I despawned him, that works for me. Careful jumping? No, that's not gonna work. I... I can shove him. That's it, I can shove him. Just do a non-P-speed midair. Yes, thank you everyone for the advice. The Korean advice. Alright. So, if I'm not mistaken... I am mistaken, that's a red Koopa. I can use the red Koopa to make a disco shell, which is probably what I need to do. Or maybe just give him the green shell and he'll do something interesting, so let's just try that. Let's try that again. Ready? A level called Alpha Dream Flight. We certainly aren't flying much. All right, flying Koopa. That solves the problem. Of it mostly solves the problem of how I get up there. Okay, so we give the uh, the Goomba the shell. So we give the Goomba the shell. <laughs> yeah. Well, first off, you make a plan, and then you have to actually execute it. As they say, no plan survives its first brush with reality. Alright, so now I have a mushroom. I'm not certain that a mushroom helps me. Oh yeah, it does. Give me the P-switch. How do I... Are you... Alright, fine. Yoshi. All right, so what I have to do is actually acquire the Yoshi within a very short period of time so that I can eat the other P-Switch, which spawns here, so I can hit this thing, which I presume is a vine spawn. Get the moon, though. Must be a, se a special world shell. Yep. Oh, what's up, uh, Black Dragon Yu-Gi-Oh? How you doing? Yoshepshin. <laughs> Indeed. We must go deeper. If only we could have another Yoshi on screen. But it's okay. Is a second to last or last? No, uh... <laughs> so, as a sort of stupid gag, I, I typed that up. This is the... This isn't even the last level. Um, I should have done that. No, Yoshi, come here! I'm slow. This is a nope contest judge level. I just figured I'd tag it up as if it was a real level. So this is not a real level for the contest. This is just a judging level, a judge level, so. I have to say, I'm liking the concept. It's definitely like a puzzle level. I, I like puzzle levels. I won't make any bones about that. But I have yet to really figure out the trick. Double bounce shell is the paratrooper shell, hence the two bounces. Ah, good to know. That does make sense. I can't Yoshi fast enough. At least I got the moon. Huh. This other Yoshi is slightly bigger than the other Yoshi. I never really noticed. Bye, Yoshi. You're too slow. Yes, thank you, Sonic from Brawl. Truly an inspiration to us all. To be faster at anything we do. Never quite got how to play Sonic and Brawl, but I also am not that good at Smash Brothers. Ooh, 
Why don't I throw Yoshi? Um, probably because I didn't think to throw the Yoshi. I don't know. Dang it. Oh, I've got an idea. Nope. I'm pretty sure I need that vine to continue the level. Let me think about this. Is there any way I can cheese this? If I was big coming into the level, I could use the mushroom to embiggen my Yoshi. Which is not really an option right now. Could be an option later, but it's not really an option right now. I could spawn additional Koopas to make the eating process slightly easier, apparently. Oh, I see what happened here. Huh. Apparently it loses its uh, paracoopiness after getting hit once. If you eat a berry in the process of swallowing another, it'll pretty much always do the glitch that displaces the berry without eating it. Yeah, the middle berry is face height, just run into it. All right. If you respawn the shell, oh, okay. Yeah, we can try that in case I screw up. That makes sense. I imagine the shell would retain its characteristics after respawning as opposed to uh, when it didn't respawn. Something about chat being way smarter than I am sometimes. I got it. There are many like it, but that one's mine. Uh, I wasn't expecting that. You need to keep blue Yoshi. Also, don't get rid of yellow shells too quickly. Oh, God. All right, that's a reset door. This was not what I was expecting this level to be about. Okay. Um, I can stomp a lot. That's a good sign. I can frighten my Yoshi. I can really frighten my Yoshi. I need to kick it above his head. Or maybe not. No, nope, that's not what you do. Oh boy, that message is not going to get old anytime fast. Alright, here's my theory for the time being. I want to use the red shell. Maybe I don't want to use the red shell at all. Oh, wait, or I could do the easy thing. <laughs> Never mind. I had a plan, I just didn't need to actually use it. Alright, I guess we'll do that. Alright, guess we gotta get pushed through for this to work. No, I need, needed to have gotten pushed through for that to work, okay. You get the first part, now you gotta think about the rest of it. Yep. Me too. Me too. All right. But I, I can just do this. No, I can't do that. So I have to get rid of the shell here. Or do I? Yeah, I think I do. Let's assume that it makes sense for the time being. That works. Eat a couple fuzzies. Grab this to see whatever's in here. 
Not certain I need it, but okay. How does this help me get through the mushroom? What? Okay, that's not weird at all. Alright, so I need a shell. I had to get rid of my shell for that. I think I... Oh, I didn't. I needed to use the fire flower to get rid of that, I guess. While maintaining the yellow shell. But I already have fire flower now, so... Timing puzzles are hard. Ah. All right. It occurs to me the timer is still ticking down. I would say actually one of my biggest complaints is that the fact that the timer doesn't reset on the reset door. You can make a puzzle level, don't actually give people time constraints. Let them solve it at their own pace. And deal with the fact they're really bad at grabbing yellow shells out of the air. I'm certain there's plenty of soft lock potential, I just haven't seen it yet. How can I not... Like, this is a case where it would be perfectly fine for it to be one lower. And you could actually grab it on a jump, and that would actually be kind of less annoying. Alright. I'm gonna let time run out a little bit here. Because I need to use the restroom again. I will be right back. Alright, I am back. Duck jumping. You know, I hadn't considered duck jumping. Mistakes were made. Either way, we're pretty much dead here anyway. Drum indeed. Usually ducking won't change things on Yoshi, but not percent especially because he's big. Yeah. Well... The thing about puzzle levels is, like, I feel you should just have checkpoints after every reasonable puzzle because, like, resolving a puzzle is unsatisfying unless you were a small child. Not to be, like, insulting or anything, but, like, if you've ever done a jigsaw puzzle and you're not a small child, you don't really want to do one more than once. Yeah, throwing, throwing the Yoshi was definitely the right move. Did you know Yoshi somehow flees to display message sprite? I don't think I understand what that sentence is actually trying to tell me. Uh, 
Um, I guess in general, I don't see Yoshi and Message Sprite on in the same place at once, so they might be the same person. Like Batman and uh, uh, Bruce Banner. When he touches it. Interesting. Yeah, I must confess, I do not understand, know or understand that mechanic. Come with me, Yoshi, if you want to live. Uh. Not helpful, Yoshi. Just for that, you get to go first. Not get the yump though. All right, onward and upward to the next section. You know, it feels like it makes a difference. I don't think it actually makes a difference. No, I think duck jump. I think ducking actually did make a difference there. Doesn't help me because I mistimed it, but I think ducking actually does make a difference. Because I can kind of stay up near the ceiling and capture that. Yeah, I think ducking actually did make a difference. It made it somewhat easier. I right, ditch the shell. And then we wait, and we walk. Because remember, getting pushed through things is different than simply walking into them. Bonk. Okay. So now... That's weird, but alright. That's a thing we did. Somewhat baffled by the utility of what I've done, but okay. I still needed the shell. Or... Yeah, I still needed the shell. <laughs> Yoshi rides Yoshi, indeed. How you doing? Uh, how you doing, Oyo? Six. I was actually looking at your thread earlier, but my memory is not as good as I would have liked. <sighs> there we go. Become a big Yoshi. Get the big Yoshi. It's okay. As long as I'm an adequate size Yoshi. Nah, I'm too slow. Alright, fine. No! It's against the Bible. Uh, thou shalt not put perch a Yoshi on another Yoshi. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I read that somewhere in Revelations. Like, I appreciate what he's trying to do here, I just don't know if I like it. Oh, I'm dead. In part because the double E thing was not going to go in my favor. Let the Yoshi live this time. This time. Alright. Oh 
Like, I just kind of wish there was a halfway point at some point. Though maybe there's one a whole lot later. You are correct. If I died with an item in my box, I could skip an awful... I could skip some of this. Um... And there is the potential for being able to die with an item in my box after a certain point. I need to stop doing that. No, I guarantee you that's not the intended path. Stop doing that. We're fitting the Yoshi in the pit. You see, there's another Yoshi in the pit, and he is quite hungry. But he'll eat anything, including, but not limited to, other Yoshis and Mario. So, we're, uh, we're in the lore, as it were. You'd set up the location for the Koopa to board the shell? I can see that. I think that uh, Nope wanted people to realize that the shell could spawn a Parakoopa, which is not necessarily the most intuitive of things. Dang it. I was kind of hoping to get another one of those. What happens if you have a thing in Yoshi's mouth when he grabs uh, wings? Does that change things? Kind of wondering, actually. Does that legitimately change things? Well, that changes things. Um, don't believe so. It do definitely doesn't bring it to the second room. All right. I was curious. Because, yeah, usually Yoshis don't let you take things to the next room, I suppose. Certainly does not allow through pipe transitions, say. There we go. Bonk. Then patience, my young Padawan. Alright. sure how that seems to mess up the everything. Mess up the everything is what I was going to say. Ah, oh, darn it. Curious set of glitches this really is. Doesn't even quite look right when Yoshi punches him in the head. I really should fix up so that it uses both uh, graphics 1, 0, and 32, but it, it's been on the list for a very long time. So, alright. Part the Yoshi. Grab the shell. I think it's somewhat imperative that I get the shell back. Come back, Zink! Alright, what we learned here is the shell is not going to come back. a hard-earned lesson, but we learned it. <laughs> Evan to Betsy, indeed. You know, I recently learned the, uh, I believe the origin of the phrase uh, getting the shaft 
It's one of those things where, like, you only ever hear it in its shortened form, but apparently it used, used to be said sometimes you get the elevator and sometimes you get the shaft. As opposed to simply, ah, oh, you got the shaft. Goes to show how, uh, goes to show something about something, I suppose. <laughs> to be as vague as possible. Shoot. Speak of the devil and he will come. He will come. Um, what is it? The the blood of something is thicker than the water of something. There's a lot of those where, like, the whole phrase is generally not something one says unless the, you have a specific reason to say it. Yeah. You get the short end of the stick is 100% what uh, getting the shaft means. I just assumed it actually had something to do with, like... I assumed it actually was from something similar from uh, the short end of the stick. I assumed it had something to do with, like, the stick being a shaft of wood, say. But, uh, but no. Nope, it actually has to do with being an elevator shaft. Damn this thing. Yep, one bad air, uh, apple spoils the bunch is what I always heard, not necessarily the barrel. But the point is similar. Alright, also I'd like to note that I am trying to take this level 100% on its own merits. Like, I'm certain there's ways of cheesing it, but I'm not actively trying to do that. Oh, I got hit by the... That's what happened. Apples don't come in bunches, that's bananas. You're not wrong. You're not wrong. Come, Mr. Tallyman, tally me banana. Daylight come and you won't go home. That's three and seven and eight and bunch. Or things I only know because of Kool-Aid. So, used to be a more common thing, but uh, ain't not ain't so much something now. But like, an awful lot of assorted uh, products would have a point system where you would be able to earn like cool things you thought would be cool by buying enough, getting the points of per proof of purchases, and sending away for some sort of mail-in catalog. And me and my siblings saved up an awful lot of Kool-Aid points to get the Wacky Zany Kool-Aid video. A ridiculous number. I think it was, I think it was like 60 points or something, or 600 points or something. Um, and really, it's not a very good video. It's mostly stock footage. A couple advertisements for KB uh, Toys, which may or may not still exist. I don't actually know. Um, as well as a few animation segments and a few fancy math tricks, of all things. Oh, and Dom DeLuise plays a guy who can't get a newspaper for some reason. That's probably the most interesting thing in there, is that Dom DeLuise actually decided he would be involved in this. So. Yes, absolutely bananas. Alright, I can still pull this off. There we go. A small amount of cheese. Not a lot of cheese, just a small amount. Okay. Drop that down. No. Okay. Uh, okay, here's what I do. I grab the shell. I put it down. I grab the Yoshi. There we go. That wasn't the right thing to do. <laughs> um, I feel like it would be a whole lot better if I didn't have the message box. try this again. There's something about, like, this sort of timing puzzle that just does not jive with me, and I cannot explain why. Like, somehow my brain just does not want to do this kind of puzzle correctly. Nuts.
wonder how much more level there is after the bits we've seen. Gotta stop doing that. I know what to do there. That clearly is not it. But ducking definitely makes this more tolerable, like, for inexplicable reasons. Alright, gonna fly up here and wait. Then bonk. Alright, way better. Way better. Alright. Anyway, I'm not kidding about the Kool-Aid thing. You can go watch it on YouTube now if you want to. It's not very good, but it is mildly entertaining in that sort of 90s way. Gotta pay attention to what I'm doing because of that note block. I mean, that's one of the segments. I want to say there were two or three segments of him not being able to buy a newspaper. Um, like, there was a part two or a part three to the whole thing. It was a very strange piece of uh, nostalgia. But yeah, that's probably it. I personally think that the banana, the Tally Man song, is probably the best part about it. There's a guy who's playing the bongos and uh, finds the singer's volume to be offensive to his ears, which is a mildly amusing gag. Let go of Y, that was my problem. Mistakes were made. I can just ride under there. That's kind of cool. I didn't know you could do that. Honk. Huh. All right. Let's try this again. You failed me for the last time. Again. as Yoshi rolls his eyes at this puzzle. As is his want to do, he's Yoshi after all. He knows what he has to do. Still don't get the imp. Or whatever we, one calls AP switch jump. All right. Wait until I know it's right. There we go. I just realized what it's all news to me means. And I feel silly for not having realized it. Alright. It's one of those things where I've seen that particular clip so many times. Like, you know, when you're of that age and you have a VHS tape, you watch them. Uh, the magnetic stuff off of the off of the VHS tape. That's simply how you do these things. Alright, I think I understand what I need to do here. He turns into a disco shell, which lets me do this, and subsequently do this, though the utility of the other one is debatable in my mind. That seems less than, uh... Oh, that's why I have to lead it over there. So it makes a vine so I can go up. But apparently touching a Y button anywhere near that kind of thing kills you. Good to know. <sighs> if it wasn't for the constraint of needing a blue Yoshi, this probably would have been an ideal spot for, like, a uh, one-up door or something. Like, I feel like the moon would have been better used as a shortcut for this type, this beginning part of the level than it would have been for just, you know, lying around like it was. Because you don't feel too clever about solving the same puzzle twice. Wasn't set up right for that one to be a yump, but all right.
No, I saw that was the wrong time. And we'll just drop in the shell just in case. And yes, I see the 1F0s now. The 1F0 is probably the most important of all things you can see in a given level. Let's not do something stupid here again. There we go. Drop it like it's hot. My level of paranoia is a little bit higher than it needs to be. Alright, here we go. Now we get in here, we drop the shell, and now we have a disco shell, which is weird. didn't want to do that. <laughs> I solved it, sort of. <laughs> yeah, for a second there, I solved it, sort of. For a bare second, everything was fantastic, and then everything kind of went to shit. <laughs> it was like poultry in motion, like a chicken flying through the air. Whenever someone says poetry, I can only think of the, uh, the bit, like the behind the scenes from Phantom Menace, uh, Phantom Menace, where he's like, oh yeah, it all flows together, like poetry. And everyone's kind of agreeing with George Lucas, even though I don't think any of them actually did, in fact, agree with him, that, uh, anything about the Phantom Menace flowed like poetry. <sighs> okay, drop it, and then let's not be dumb. I know it's a high bar, but still. It's almost like I have some sort of flying dinosaur that makes this possible. <sighs> okay, so what I need to do there is simply not die. <laughs> so that's not the hardest of asks here. flows like poetry. It plays itself like music. What more can you ask for? In the case of the uh, the prequels, uh, quite a lot. Maybe fewer double-sided lightsabers. kind of think that one berry is just not very well placed. Though it just might be me. this again. No. Like I said, there's something about this timing kind of timing puzzle, puzzle that just does not jive with my brain. Duck. Chicken. Kiwi eggplant. Yes. Yes, those are all correct. You thought they were cool when you... Like, I kind of... I mean, let's be honest. An awful lot of people actually thought the first episode wasn't bad until the later ones came out. Part of it was sort of we were sold on the potential. Um, and some of the characters were kind of cool, and some of the, like... The fight scenes were kind of cool. Like, don't get me wrong. The... What, Darth... Whatever his face. Sith man. Red face man. Um... That fight against him and the uh, the Elder Jedi was kind of cool at the time, uh, but the they didn't age well. The the prequels and of course the latter like two did not help things. So, in fact, I actually went to go see the uh, Phantom Menace with my brother's uh, math class. <laughs> he had managed to his math teacher had managed to finagle a uh, field trip to go see it for some reason. And I think we were all pretty excited about where it could go. Hey, hey there we go. Oh. 
Well, that was terrible. <laughs> yes, Darth, Darth Maul. Yes, Darth Maul. <laughs> Darth Sith, Sith Man. Yes, he was memorable. <laughs> Look, it's been a while since I've watched uh, the prequels, and he dies... Like, they sold him so hard in the advertisements and the trailers for... Uh, for the episode episode one, and then he, you know, he gets like what, like one line of dialogue at a fight scene, and he dies. It wasn't the most memorable of things. He did have a cool aesthetic. To be fair, the best thing that probably came out of the prequels was Weird Al's The Saga Begins, because he basically nailed every single story beat, despite the fact that he hadn't actually seen the movie when he made that parody. There we go. We got the B switch jump. Can't yet decide if Jar Jar is the worst or best character in history. No. Brother. I think your X and Y button broke partway through that flight, maybe. I think his paranoia has him dropping the run button out of fear every time. Yes, it might be the case. Yup, no reset, indeed. Yeah, I did make the whole, like, fight build-up before that a little bit asinine, to be honest. But crits happen. There we go. Accident, but it works. Accident, but it works. Okay, then we walk over here. Oh yeah, fun bit of trivia since uh, some people have come in since then. Um, you might notice that the title is very different. Well, slightly different from the average judging stream. The word judging is actually a keyword for my YouTube bot to do things. Ah, dang it! I thought I could get away with that. And so I had to change it to judging so it behaves in a different manner. Or inbound signaling is definitely a bad thing, but it definitely makes things easier. Oh, for... The reason this comes to mind is in part because the book I was reading earlier did mention payphones, and payphones are kind of uh, infamous. Well, the old telephone system was infamous for having inbound... Uh, was way bad. Um, for having inbound signaling, which essentially meant that it would play noises over the telephone to say, oh yeah, you dropped a quarter. And so if you uh, could convince something else to play that sound, you were set for dropping quarters into payphones. But that's neither here nor there. Yeah, this is Nope's level. It will eventually be part of a compilation if a compilation happens. Um, I might make a level, but it probably would be just something like you are a super player sort of gag or something. I'm not going to... I In the event that I need to make a level, it probably will not have that much effort put into it. So, also, how you doing, Max? Uh, there we go. Alright. I'm actually surprised that the uh, sh screen shaking is causing uh, NMI problems, but apparently it is. Didn't know you could do that in Vanilla Land. Oh. Alright, here we go. Aha! Got it. Oh. What's so satisfying about grabbing that? Don't even care. Nope. Alright, um... Right, that caused you to fly up. This level will be number two Morton. <laughs> number two Morton's Castle Creepy Pasta. Oh, uh, I guess we gotta come up with some sort I can see that. It could be kind of fun. I'm not quite sure what that would look like, but like we could get away with that. What would number two Morton's Castle Creepy Pasta look like? Well, first off, we have to get rid of the normal sprites you're expecting, right? Because that's how Creepypasta starts. It's like, oh yes, you can tell there's something wrong because the game isn't playing the way it usually does. Um, 
Hey, I got the doubly. No, yump. This is a castle, but it's not Morton's. This is not a place of honor. No great deeds have done here. There is no great treasure hidden here. I forget the timing every single time. Oh, dude. You know... It occurs to me, if you don't come in big, I think you actually are screwed here. Let's try anyway. There we go. So here's my theory. If I come through this small, what will happen here is that I will get to the fire flower and I will not be able to... Oh, never mind. He gives me a mushroom here. That solves the problem. So that guarantees you will be big through this section unless you get hit and there's a reset door. So that's fine. That's fine. Okay. If you had to recommend a time, you'd be to press jump, then tongue in quick succession, so you tongue while rising. Hmm. I'll see about trying to implement that. I'm not certain I feel confident that I can, but I'll certainly try. Alright, here we go. Ah, oh, I missed it. It's more fun to hit it up here anyway. the disco shell? Can I get away? Can I cheese this? Hmm. I can't believe that didn't kill him. I also can't believe that worked. But hey, we'll take it. <laughs> we take those. Didn't press A good enough. Or B good enough there. Do -do -do. Kind of wonder if there is a midway and what it looks like and how far into the level it is. Tonguing also renders you unable to fly briefly. Huh. That is not a feature I have ever needed. Alright, there we go. At least I'm getting good at that. It's not really noticeable since you can't fly without a knight in your mouth, save for these wing rooms. Oh, that's fair. Yeah, that's definitely not a thing I've ever concerned myself with, because, yeah, that doesn't really happen. I guess it could happen in chat hack sort of parlance, but there we go. I think, I think I've got the timing down now. Um, but outside of that, it usually doesn't happen much in uh, hacks when I'm moderating, because... I, I can't think of a single time someone's used the wing item in any of the hacks I've moderated. It just isn't a thing people do. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm legitimately trying to think of any instance where I've seen this dang item used and in a hack, and I'm actually drawing a blank. Maybe... Maybe jump or jump half? Maybe? But... Yeah, I can't come up with one there. Um, I could have sworn I've seen it used in, like, a Panga hack, but I think Panga was trolling people, so, you know, that there's that. Like, it's just not a common thing to do at this point in time. Oh, I missed it. 
Wait a second. Oh wait, no, it's a disco shell, so I can't spit it out. That's the trick, or at least the supposed trick. I wonder if I need the disco shell. Because I certainly had got it in my mouth. I can assume not. Wait, what? Well, I guess I can just, like, fly under this. To a point. Can I respawn what was happening here? Because something weird was happening here. And what it was wasn't exactly clear. Like, there's a Goomba. Ah, I see now. I can use, uh, there's like an invisible 1F0 for some reason. Why not make it visible? Jump used it in ISO sky level. Keep a positive altitude. Ah, then I definitely don't remember that one. <laughs> Alright, well, scared the Yoshi. That hurt. So, what we learned here is that we need to keep the Yoshi, which means that's actually a timing puzzle, for one. my cheese instinct had just gone underneath it. We're gonna figure this out, I swear. Bruh. Yeah, I guess there can't be a midway if you're going to do it this way. I'm getting faster at that. That's the uh, the one solace I can take in all this. Here I am thinking I actually got the timing down. Bonk. Okay, there we go. On the bright side, I have an awful lot of time on the timer now, so... However longer this level is, we'll be able to keep going. Be big anyway. Oh crap. Um. Okay, Yoshi will keep existing. I don't want to get the Yoshi till after all this nonsense. Problem solved. Simply a matter of thinking it through. Like, being big is a little bit of a liability here. That wasn't exactly what I was expecting, but okay, I can work with that. Run the Yoshi in. Mistakes were made. It worked so well the first time I did it. It did not work so well the second time I did it.
A checkpoint would have been nice indeed. Like, an awful lot of levels, when you have a good idea, it doesn't necessarily need to be the be-all, end-all of ideas, right? Like, a checkpoint or two would be nice. Like, this first section's almost entirely superfluous to the big idea of this level, which is the Yoshi flight bit. Like, I don't think you need this part. It literally just wastes, what, like half a minute of my time every time I have to do it? Um, he's dead. No, he's not dead. All right, cool. I managed to salvage that. Um, but the problem with puzzles and puzzle levels in general is how... Is it actually fun to resolve the same thing again? And whether or not that's a kinetic... A fun kinetic puzzle. Um, and Kaizo is sort of that category of SMW, right? Like, Kaizos are fun kinetic puzzles provided you have the manual dexterity to pull them off. Um, and or figure them out. That does not mean everybody wants to do them, but that's fine. Like, really, they're not for everyone. Um, but with puzzles that don't have an awful lot of manual parts to them, like, repeatedly doing them gets kind of old quick. So yeah, a checkpoint would have been nice. I think also just, like... Something of a promise that I don't actually need to get the shell. Interesting, you can't actually kill that with the shell. Good to know. I mean, yeah, that's kind of the problem with old DC is you can't have checkpoints. Um, and you can have some checkpoints, but you can't have too many of them. Don't think it'd be possible to have a checkpoint with this kind of level. I mean... Yes and no. Like, it could be theoretically... Like, you could copy the level and just give someone a blue Yoshi. Like, I'm pretty sure you can just spawn a blue Yoshi as a thing you can do. Since tiny blue Yoshis exist, you can, you know, put one in the world, have it eat five things, and have it fall on you uh, after the midway. Like, there are options here, I'm pretty sure. One-up checkpoints were not banned and were actually used by more than one level. Hey, I got the imp. Um, yeah, you could have a shortcut to the wings. That'd also be pretty nifty. That was an accident, but it worked. Start a location on the main level and get the Yoshi block. Wing Yoshi... Won't work without the transition. That is true, because you end up in that weird winged Yoshi state, so like, in all DC, I guess you couldn't do this without getting that. So there, there can't be a midway unless there's, like, something past this gimmick. So that's not disconcerting at all. Alright, there we go. Okay. Oh, interesting. I didn't know there were only two and they were based upon the level, the trans level number. That is an interesting detail. Or level number. One of the two. So I'm 90% sure I don't need the, uh, the block. I mean, ultimately what this probably means is this is not the right kind of level to make for this contest. No! <laughs> Crap! <sighs> yeah, I think I need to also lose my power up there. That would just make life easier, unless it's actually mandatory later. Because I'm just not fast enough mashing through that section. Or maybe that's the intent from the get-go, is that uh, Muncher part it actually deprives you of your power-ups. 
so. Funny enough, I got to see both, um, like, Dragon Coin, 1-Up, and Moon checkpoints. Are you kidding me? I ain't failed that in a while. Does this video have a, a does this level have a clear video? Doesn't seem like the intended strat. Yes, if you go look at um, Nope Contest's thread, there is a clear video. I wasn't planning on watching it. I was planning on just beating it. But uh, he posted this in the C3 thread, uh, C3 forum, in his own thread. So there is definitely a clear video. I definitely saw it earlier today. better all the time, but not at uh, jumping on P-switches. But this wouldn't be the first time I've gotten fixated on a not very good strat, much to my own detriment, so. I assure you, I've definitely gotten fixated on bad strats. Found it excellent. Well, please don't spoil me too much, but feel free to, uh, in the event that I ask, let me know that I have been exceedingly dumb. Yep. Yeah, that A press was really risky. Oh, dang it, I'm not gonna have a chance to get, reach it out of the air, grab it out of the air. Nope. Missed it. No. Um. Okay. Destroy that. Realize the Yoshi's not coming back. Darn. Vaguely reminded me of the movie Aragon for a minute, which I don't remember too much about it aside from the part where the dragon flies away and the kid looks so crestfallen. But that's how I felt right there. Nice stray pixel. Yeah, that's probably a result of my stuff more so than uh, nope contests. I'm not going to worry about that. Hey, we got the jump. Describe part of the never-ending story. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen that movie in forever. Once tried to play the DOS game, Never-Ending Story, and we couldn't figure out what we were supposed to do, even though two of my siblings had had back seen the movie. It was that one of those kinds of games. Where it just was opaque enough that it did not help. The books were good. Never watched it. Huh. I didn't know there were books. It was one of those, like, weird 80s movies where I probably should revisit it at some point, but haven't. Um, one of the most amusing references I've ever seen to uh, for it was the uh, Go Rengai uh, skit from... I think it was Gaki no Tsukai, but I'm not entirely certain. But basically, you know, five rangers and they'd keep messing up and not having the correct composition of colors. And so the monster would keep telling them off, and one of them, they had the uh, dragon from NeverEnding Story as one of the characters, one of their uh, their colors. In addition to the Mori building and other things, like, the whole, whole shtick is just weird. But they were never very good at being a ranger group, so... Crap, that wasn't it. Oh, Aragon, yes. Inheritance Cycle, yeah, no, I, I never read the books. One of my siblings did, but I, I didn't. 
it was I was sort of out of that age group by the time they came out, I think. Which movie? I'm talking about Aragon, uh, as Louis typed out. Uh, I remember just seeing it, and I didn't actually want to go see that movie. It was more of a, everyone is seeing a movie, I guess I'll go see this movie with them sort of situations. Um, and frankly speaking, I spent more time laughing than I did enjoying like the actual movie part. It just was not a very good movie. So I would recommend not watching the movies, Louie, if you have any uh, appreciation of that particular series. Sup, Sensible? Glad to see you're back with exactly the same amount. Yeah, I do pay attention sometimes. Good. I think I can still do this. Nope. One day. One day I will manage to uh, consistently jump on P-switches. Not today. Not today. Give you a British comedy? Uh, Red Dwarf? The IT crowd? Yeah, Red Dwarf. I'd go with Red Dwarf. That's one of the few ones I can definitely affirmatively say I greatly appreciate. I mean, Monty Python did a lot of different things. Um, if you've never seen Life of Brian, I would say Life of Brian is one of my favorite things they've done. Since we were talking about uh, biblical stuff earlier, it's a bit of a uh, parody of biblical stuff. There's a great stoning scene, I'm not gonna lie, that, that still makes me laugh, and the song Always Look on the Bright Side of Life is fantastic. Uh, Meaning of Life, also pretty okay. Still have a soft spot for uh, Holy Grail, even though I'm perfectly willing to admit that nerds have kind of ruined that, being a nerd who probably kind of ruined it. Those blocks are really annoying. Oh wait, it's it's 1F0. I don't have to do anything fancy there. <laughs> Come back, Zink! Nope, nope. Okay, so I have a better strategy there now. Black books? Oh, I've never heard of that one. Faulty Towers, don't mention the war. Um, you know what's a series I've seen a lot of clips of that I've enjoyed but never actually watched? Uh, yes, Minister. There are parts of that that I have found very entertaining, but have not actually seen in any serious capacity. It seems like quite the amusing political, uh, comedy. Certainly parts of that that I understand, even through the lens of America and it not being the 1990s anymore, still makes a lot of bizarre sense, especially with regards to, like, push poles. The push pole bit is actually quite fantastic. <laughs> What's up, Ramsey Archer? How you doing? I am presently trying to defeat the same part of a level over and over, because that's simply how it has to be. What is that thing? Oh, it's like a Mega Man, except dead. Yep. Okay. I'm determined. This, this is the urn. Okay, so do that. Drop that. Yeah, grab it right out of the air. I can't believe I just did that. Well, you know what? I'll still take it, and I'm also going to kill this Chuck, because screw this guy. Yeah, seeing the 1F0s probably should have clued me into that earlier, but, uh, you know, it happens sometimes.
American comedy is always the same. I don't think I'd agree with that. Um... What? What is expected of me here? That's what's expected of me here. Or, wait, no. Maybe? Was that the strat? I don't know. Alright, Yoshi ate the shell. Hopefully I didn't need that for something. Hopefully I didn't need the Yoshi for something. Yeah, Terry Gill made 12 Monkeys and Brazil. Um, yeah, he is a monster. He is he's, he's crazy. He has done all sorts of crazy, weird, experimental film stuff that you wouldn't expect from one of the Monty Python people. Spoilers if you figure out what it's... Yeah, I, I've definitely read that it's changed. Uh, it changed names. I don't think that's a terrible spoiler at this point. But, but yeah, uh, Terry Gilliam's uh, repertoire is kind of ridiculous in the grand scheme of things. Uh, I remember watching his more recent movie, one of his more recent movies, I guess, at this point. It hasn't been recent for quite some time. The Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus. And at the very end of the movie, this kid yelled out, That was weird! And everyone in the theater just broke out in laughter because we couldn't disagree with him. It was just a really weird movie. He, the kid was completely right. Also, there were like, what, 15 of us in the movie theater, but still, you know, all of us did agree upon that point. End up watching that movie, like, the ending of that movie, like, four times on the way to Japan. It was that or Wally. I also watched uh, 12 Angry Men once. I think that was enough. 12 Angry Men is a good movie, but you don't really need to see it more than once. But that was back before, like, you know, they added more uh, sort of independent systems to airplanes where you can watch your own movie. It was just the same, like, eight movies over and over and over. Really glad they changed that. Ah, dang it. Alright. That... helps that I now know what I'm doing. There we go. Alright. Bonk. 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 Okay. So let's think about this. I probably need the yellow shell. I think the whole point of this gate is to make sure you're still big when you get here. And can take a hit to uh, get the Yo Yoshi through. So what's most important here is making sure the Yoshi doesn't eat the shell. Okay. It occurs to me that I could have left the shell alone? guys enjoy the overworld music for a minute while I use the restroom again. I'll be right back. Thank you. 
All right, there we go. It's in the Criterion Collection. Uh, yeah, you should watch it. It's a legitimately good film. Um, like, from a perspective... Let, let me just die now. Um, if you're watching it with sort of an eye towards film, uh, it's, it's incredibly well done. It's a black and white movie. It's good. Um, it tells an interesting story. Um, the thing I find most interesting is that most of it's sort of done in the general theater format. And there was very little done in the way of, like, reshots. Except for the really obvious ones, where the old man is, like, directly facing the camera because they're like, Oh, yeah, I guess we screwed this up, and so we need to get him to be in a different shot here. So. Well, I can still pull this off. I cannot pull this off. Die, Yoshi, die. You're a massive film fan? Oh, excellent. It's not a bad hobby. Um, I'm not as big of a film buff as I'd like to think I am. I had a plan to actually like watch the hundred most important movies or whatever, and I started with the like silent film stuff. I could not get through Intolerance. It is not a good movie. There's multiple reasons why it's not a good movie, but it, more importantly than any other political reason, it's not entertaining. It's really boring and not well put together. You want a good silent movie? Watch Trip to the Moon. That's actually good. Like, it's impressive special effects for being made in like, you know, a century and change ago. The plot is understandable. Some French people go to the moon. It's actually pretty decently done. More of an anime fan and old cartoons, yeah. I was talking with a friend about that, I'm like, I really just don't watch much in the way of, like, standard sitcoms or dramas. I mostly just watch comedies and cartoons. But I do appreciate a well-made movie. The best way to enjoy films is for the art itself, like the cinematography and what. Yeah. No, I'm still a big sucker for, like, a good long shot. Um, probably the most recent one of those I can point at was uh, Weird Al's video Tacky is done in one shot. The entire, like, four-minute video is done in one shot. And I'm always impressed by lengthy shots like that. Well, I'm dead. Find the movie Hugo and the Smashing Pumpkins movie tonight, starring Tom Kenny. Uh, what? What spawned it? <laughs> I think I need a, a more proper noun for that, unfortunately. Unless you mean the uh, Trip to the Moon, because Trip to the Moon is a really good movie. <laughs> Trip to the Moon. Yep. Okay. Scooby Doo, Flintstones, Jetsons. You know, I, I kind of liked some of the old Hanna-Barbera stuff, but I can't speak a whole lot to how good it actually is. Um, did watch some Rocky and Bowwinkle recently, and I thought it held up okay for what it was. Um, culturally, I think Rocky and Bowwinkle are probably more interesting than most cartoons just because they have a good Cold War aesthetic. You've got uh, Boris and Natasha being quite literally like Cold War Russian spies, which is something you don't see a whole lot of nowadays. You know, outside of movies where this is supposed to be taken seriously. 
Nothing can beat Russian Ark. Okay, I have to... You know what? Okay, sure, that's not really Hanna-Barbera. I'm just naming cartoons at some point. I have to look that up. There we go. Nope, nope, nope. Ah. I am not a clever man. I want to see this uh, long, long uh, tit shot movie. Or at least read up about it. We're talking like cartoons and movies that are legitimately good to watch. Uh, the Yellow Submarine by the, uh, well, The Yellow Submarine, which is a Beatles movie but does not actually involve the Beatles in any serious capacity, bizarrely enough, um, is fascinating for a number of reasons. Not not uh, limited to the fact that the animation is incredibly bizarre. There's an awful lot of like weird cross-media stuff going on in that uh, film, some of which is just inexplicable. I've got a hole in me pocket. Yep, that's the part they were involved in. That's the only part they were involved in. After filming a movie, they were like, you know what? We don't really like filming movies. I think we'll, uh... Oh, come on, you were... Oh, I'm dead anyway. So they decided to do a cartoon and just finance it out after doing, like, one or two of their three movie deal. So... One hour, 90, or 39 minute single take. That is ridiculous. And I say that as a person who rarely edits videos, so like for my C3 thread, I just kept doing my uh, chat hack stuff over and over until I was vaguely satisfied with the result. And I even now I can acknowledge that it would have benefited from just like cutting out a small amount in the middle. And that was 50 whole seconds. So, there we go. No jump. It's time for time. Yeah, no, it's just a fantastic little movie. Especially if you like British comedy. I would recommend watching The Yellow Submarine. It's cheesy, it's punny, it's got good Beatles music. It's got trippy animation. The overall theme is pretty good. Make sure you get the version that actually has Hey Bulldog. The American cut isn't quite as good as the British cut for some reason. I don't know why they excluded that song. It's like a whole like 10 minutes of extra crap. But uh, the American cut did not have that back in the day. I saw it in theaters and it didn't even have... Well, actually no. So I had the VHS version which did not have uh, that extra animatic in it. Um, and when they did bring it back to theaters, they did have Hey Bulldog, but it was only in theaters for the longest time until they did a Blu-ray release. So, the more you know. Yep, I already know this. I'm not gonna sound like the biggest Beatles buff, but I definitely like the Yellow Submarine. <laughs> there we go. I'm prepared. So here's a theory. My theory has been disproven. I cannot actually hit him because of the, uh, the shells, but... Okay. There we go. Problem solved. Will there be a post before Chadex explaining the changes? Yes. Um, I made some of them today. I have not made all of them today. Uh, the changes are pretty minuscule for everyone who isn't like you. <laughs> that's not a like diss or anything, that's just a statement. Um, so really the biggest one is if you're writing Carl modules, you'll need to take into account the Uber ASM style ORing address um, so that you get things right. Zero page will still be in the right place. Like nothing really has... I, I can save this. Okay. Nothing extreme has changed. It's simply that the SA1 has, you can you can use the addresses involved in SA1, which is the really big one. From most people's perspective, nothing will have changed because the address mapping will have happened automatically. But um, for programming perspective, I'm gonna add the Uber ASM, like is SA1 flag and that stuff. 
Um, but they needed to make a slightly more advanced change to Carl for that to work properly for other reasons, so, yeah. I can't eat that. I can eat about two blocks away, but I... Oh, what? Oh, I knocked it. I knocked it. Yeah. Ugh. If I threw the shell, it probably wouldn't have helped me much. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know how he made the invisible ones. I assume it's just a default tile in map 16. Because, again, this is OLDC style, so you can't really do much in the way of changes. Yeah, I didn't mean to throw it without Yoshi, it just kind of happened. Is SA1 free during module execution? have to ask, what exactly does do you mean by that? Because <laughs> um, I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that. I'm thinking, I'm thinking. Crap. Can you invoke the SA1 chip in modules? I can't stop you from doing it. I don't know if it's going to work because I haven't tried it. So basically, if you try it and it crashes, don't do it. But otherwise, I can't guarantee anything at this point. Um, my suspicion is because of when it's invoked, it's probably fine. But, again, I think this is a you'll-have-to-try-it-and-see sort of situation, because I definitely have not. I don't actually know how to invoke the SA-1. Quite literally, this is just chat hacks plus SA-1. It doesn't necessarily execute in the context of SA-1, so give it a shot, see what happens. Best I can say at this point. Oh, come on! Does R work with SA1? Uh, no. I can say most definitively it will not work with SA1. It will still return a result. The result will not be reliable in any way, shape, or form. Like, it's still going to try, but it's going to do something dumb and it's not going to work. Um, and that's just a constraint I can't fix. I hate that note block. As I've been saying, part of the problem with this sort of thing is you have to keep solving the parts of the puzzle you've already solved, and it's not as interesting the third or fifteenth time around. I remember solving this Pokemon puzzle I had back when I was, you know, a wee, wee lad. And the thing about it is, you know, after you solved it like four times, like a physical jigsaw puzzle, you knew how everything pretty much went. There wasn't any actual challenge. Nope. Too late. One flutter, too many. Anyway, if you have any further questions about it, I'm happy to answer. I just don't necessarily have all the best answers right now. A certain amount of it is, it looks like it works. I tested it, it looks like it works. We're gonna see 
and worst comes to worst, if it doesn't work, then we'll downgrade to non-SA1 chat hacks. So. But I feel kind of confident it's worked for other stuff. Like, I've based an awful lot of this around how I wrote stuff for the Super Mario RPG SMW randomizer multi-world stuff. And so there's a certain amount of, like, it probably will work. But there's also a certain amount of this is still new and may not, so we'll see. Really, if it wasn't for the, um... Weirdness of SMW always wanting to set certain... Oh, I'm not gonna get into that. This would be a lot easier if it worked like Mario RPG is all I'm saying. So... Sometimes your tongue just goes right through it. There we go. Sometimes scroll strats are just necessary. Okay. This feels like a perfect place for there to be a midway, but there is not. Okay, so grab that. None of that was my plan. None of that was my plan. I can get to the reset door, but it doesn't matter because I can't get the Yoshi there. But I, I can spit this thing out and maybe grab, you know, hit bonk it on the way back. Hmm. Oh, it just takes so long to get there. Yoshi rolls his eyes at this, as he is wont to do. Oh. Yay, got the yump. Okay. So... Oh. And then we do that. Like, I feel it's relatively straightforward to that section. You know, the part where I keep dying. kind of enjoyable, except for the fact that it really just needs a checkpoint. <laughs> bonk here, bonk there. Ah, darn it. Didn't quite get rabbit out of the air. I'm dead. Or am I? I'm definitely dead. Pfft. You save states. Oh, wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? I was hoping to play around with some C3 stuff, but that does not appear to be happening today. Oh. 
Nope. Still didn't get the P-switch jump. Okay. hit an awful lot of blocks first. Hey, what Louis said is correct. If the tongue is open, you cannot actually fly, which is why I died there. Good to know about the advanced tech that killed me. Do that, do this. After all, there's only a certain point we keep talking about the same three things you're doing in a level over and over. At least I'm getting the speed down for this. No yimp. said about not using the same three pieces of music over and over, or not using the uh, Switch Palace music. Alright. I'm determined. Me and my Yoshi buddy are in fact very determined. a big difference than I thought it would. The, uh, you can't fly while having your tongue out thing. It really, in fact, makes a difference in terms of your altitude. Okay. This is fine. I might even look at the clear video at this point. Oh, now I have to do this in a different way. Well, scroll strats probably solved the problem. Scroll strats, scroll strats definitely solved the problem. Still one of the best things about SMW cheesing. Just, you know, scroll it away. Bit like the broom shakalaka, it solves so many problems. Don't want to deal with it? Yeah, just don't let it spawn. Okay. Alright, so what am I looking at here? Oh, God. Okay, I have a plan. I think I can pull this off. Alright, my plan has been negated by the fact that there is level design. Crap! <laughs> Do you have a nasty Koopa problem? Use our new scroll away! Alright, problem. I need to be able to hit these blocks. Solution, use the shell. So what I could do is like drop the shell into those, I guess, so it wouldn't kick me out, I guess, or try to up throw it into the things that probably would solve the problem. So basically leave the Yoshi alone. The Yoshi is not important for that puzzle. That was indeed a Kaizo block. But not the first one we've seen above a P-Switch. Just to point out the obvious here, it's not entirely uncommon in this level. Nuts. Do 
We saved the Yoshi, but at what cost? Okay. This time shall be different, said the man with very little faith that this would actually be the case. We're getting there, we're getting there. So you know what's the silliest thing I learned today? I finally learned where to look for the uh, the switch blocks for C3. I didn't realize they were going to be in the header with the uh, time remaining. I found two after the fact that I, you know, bothered to read the post explaining exactly how it works. I probably will not find eight in the remaining time, given that I know how it works. But... I found two. I'm fine with that. There we go. Bonk. Bonk. Dang it. Really wanted to grab that out of the air. problem here is like because of the requirement of being big you forget Kai C3s have gimmicks yeah it you know wasn't the world's most interesting gimmick for me at least like it's just an incentive to post but it's got a gimmick it's not the worst Yeah, Mr. Switchy. I kind of like Chuck better because it at least had some sort of interesting interactive component compared to hitting a P-Switch, but eh. Like some of the past ones you've lurked. I, yeah, I kind of like the Yoshi race. Um, I was actually really happy that I chose the correct type of Yoshi. I was like, okay, everyone's going to pick blue Yoshi, so what's the one that's actually going to win? Because they explained the statistical way it's going to work. Um, and I'm like, of course, no one's going to pick Red Yoshi, and lo and behold, Red Yoshi wins. It was close, but Red Yoshi did in fact win. I was mildly happy about my statistical inference, but... Not the world's most important thing. Best gimmick was the casino. That's before my time. I've heard good things about it, though. There we go. I'm still not certain what the point of that really is, beyond, like, teaching me that that is a thing that could happen. Oh. Also somewhat baffled again by the fact that it seemed to be causing some sort of NMI problem. <laughs> but here we are. Oh. 3k posts were made in threads just dedicated to gambling. Oh, damn. Well, we all know that gambling is addictive, so I suppose it makes a lot of sense. There we go. And there we go. Thank you, Yoshi. We appreciate your service.
Briefly forgot I could fly. That is an indeed a absurd. Oh. I see what you mean by kick the shell. So yeah, I could do that, and then come back and the shell will respawn, but the other two things won't. Then I can use the Yoshi... Get it through here. No, no I can't. Um, because you can't slide in a one-tile spot. So, so much for that cheese. And that means the shell's gone now because the Yoshi ate it, and that defeats the purpose. And I can't get back to the Yoshi because... Oh, wait, I can get back to the Yoshi. Okay, Th this is solvable. But I can't get back to the reset door. Or can I? No, I can't. Oh, just so unpleasant. Was it that high? It wouldn't surprise me. I mean, you... If you go to C3 now, you can see a bunch of like, oh yes, I see you created a thing that's pretty cool, I guess, uh, posts. When you incentivize, pe incentivize people to make qu uh, quantitative posts, you don't necessarily get qualitative posts. You're not too late, are you? Um, it depends upon what you're thinking lateness means, Juby. If you're asking if I'm still playing, yeah, I'm still playing. Um, this isn't really a, uh... Oh, well, DC level. This is Nope Contest's judge level, which... has proven to be a bit of a bear. So... Looking at the threads, it's... almost 26k, but that responded with the results to... almost 10k posts. That's a lot. Um, I did start with one I missed. Uh, I forgot to finish Way Kubular um, on stream, and I did, in fact, finish Way Kubular on stream. Number 99, but... No, Way... Yes, Way Cool Tubular, except it's way called Way Kubular. Um... I assume that's because there was a balloon section. Most of us you've seen are fine, except for that one guy who was borderline spamming, yeah. I mean, a few people did do some spamming. I mean, there's a reason why the staff put up a, hey, don't do that, post. Um, just because there were a few people who were not really reading what they saw. I recall one post saying, hey, this looks cool, I don't usually pay Kaizo, but you know, it's cool. Um, and it was clearly not a Kaizo hack. So. You assume that's what, yeah. Just commenting nice, yeah. You, there should be some more, some more substantive uh, substance to your posts than that, is really all that they were, were trying to say. Uh, unless it was that one thread where you literally reply with a number, but there's a reason why there was a like, no switches on that one. Okay. Okay. I think the intended solution is something along the lines of this. To get the shell down here. Spit the shell out. Ditch my Yoshi for a second, because he'll stay where he was. Did not mean to dupe it, but I'll take it. Alright, now drop the shell. Drop the Yoshi. That would have been embarrassing. Uh, okay, what do I want to do here? 
the ASM one, uh, James. I don't know exactly the names, but yeah, James sounds right. Do you like the C3 gimmick more than last year's? Last C3's? Uh, last C3's was Chuck Quizmo. I kind of liked Chuck Quizmo, to be honest. Oh, it's a one-tile gap again. Never mind! I just clipped through the whole thing. Okay. Um... Thank you for giving my humble little level a shot. Maybe next year I'll actually enter the contest. Nope. Uh, okay. Well, I spent the whole time being one obstacle, maybe two obstacles away, and then I kind of cheesed one of them. I'm not really sure what happened there. Think about switches is just find the switches. Yep. The entire ground up to that point was just lava underground. Instead of find the question and get it right. I kind of like that aspect, but I kept getting questions about ad music, and I'm like, I know nothing about any of the ad musics. I didn't get a single dang assembly question. You know, the kind of one that I could have actually answered. I'll enter the contest. Nope. Look, I appreciate that the quiz thing was at least a slot machine with some level of skill to it, as opposed to the switch, uh, switch pressing, which was literally just a slot machine. So, all right, now time to write my notes because that's very important. Uh, design. Some numbers out of some numbers. Creativity. Some numbers out of some numbers. This was a pretty cool level, though. I don't really think it respected my time as a player. A single midway, if possible, would have made this level a lot more enjoyable. Spending a uh, whole half minute every single time to just get to the there was never a midpoint meat of the level was kind of annoying sub sec the problem with puzzle levels is that solving a puzzle once is edifying solving a puzzle 25 times is not you just saw the last three minutes uh let me check my uh my logs it should tell me how long i've been at this so i have been at this one for exactly two hours. So there you go. Yep. I mean, part of that was me being dumb. Part of that was just the fact that I didn't do it right. And even then, I don't think I did the last part right. I think I flew through the part part of the level I wasn't supposed to. I really don't know what the, the last part of the solution was. As long as I spent on French Twost? I'm not sure that is. I probably should, like, go and tabulate time up spent on levels and make a graph for people. That could be entertaining, I guess. That's not hard data for me to come by. We'll see if I feel like that sometime soon. Reset doors should give you power, needed power from the puzzles? Yes, it really should. The theme for next C3 should be making the ultimate COVID vaccines that ultimately entirely protects you from cars. Super Mario World Central is a pretty impressive place, but it's not that impressive. So, is this is equal to something? As far as I know, no. It could have been built to allow a reset. 
at the middle point past the fire flower with mid secondary entr entrances. I suspect it could have, but the problem, once again, is the uh, going to the sky world and getting the Yoshi, right? No, it could have. Actually, no, there, there would have been an easy solution to this. You would have just, like, had a, uh, a block with a Yoshi in it um, and a block with the wings in it that were hidden by the one-ups, one-up tiles. And then inside the uh, the Yoshi level, there would have been, you could have put another door that would have put you at the midpoint of that. So there would have been a way to do it. It would have been a bit clunky, but it would have been appreciated. So yeah. Vaccine BPS patches for your ROM. You mean if you're already past that point of reset door? Yeah. I mean, the part where like you could get easily trapped and then not have any recourse, not having a reset door at that point was kind of awful because you didn't have any recourse. Timer override, yeah. Not having a reset door uh, for the P switch in the hit. I gotta find the exact phrasing for that part. If you destroyed the yellow switch or the yellow uh, shell or loss. You know what? I kind of just want to know what the actual solution is now. I think I'll just watch that after I'm done here. Uh, my plan was to actually spend some time. Our issues were also kind of a problem. There are four teams. You can join one. You can't see the team's results until the results are announced. You can't change the teams during the event either. Uh, yeah, that was the uh, Yoshi race one, right? I guess plus or minus the ability to uh, see how people were doing, I guess. But... I would love to spend some time looking at C3 stuff, like it said, but I didn't expect that to take two hours. So, anyway, I think we're going to have to call it here. Let's see if anyone is playing some cool Super Mario World stuff. Anyone I know, at least. You know what? Um... Man, I kind of want to do this. I have a, I, I kind of want to do it. All right, I'm going to do it. Juz is actually playing SMW, where he usually is not. So I, I kind of want to raid Juz, because I've only ever done that once. And Juz is cool. So, um... I'm trying to think of, like, a raid message. I should have a raid message. God, I'm not good at raid messages. Um... If anyone has a suggestion, now is the time to say it. Yeah. Lush has been uh, prolific, if nothing else. Like, since 5, and then releasing three of them during C3. It's, it's a bit gutsy. I'm not sure I like it, but it's gutsy. I, I appreciate the, uh, the moxie that they're displaying. Um, raid message. I'm not good at raid messages. Anyway... Say hi to Juz, because I am not going to be able to come up with a raid message. Yeah, that's that's legitimate what happened. If you go look at waiting hacks, I think that uh, no one's moderated them yet because, well, uh, nobody's moderated anything from C3 too much yet. So, anyway, I'll be back in about 12 hours. We'll do some chat hacking essay one style. I'll uh, post on my Discord. I have a Discord. I probably should also point out that I have a Discord for like. 
the point of doing chat hacks and USB stuff. And uh, I'll be back in about 12 hours for some chat hacking. It'll be cool. Say hi to And I will see you all later. Have a good rest of your day. Gonna push the button now. Or the button will disappear and I can't. Alright, well, hopefully it works.